Welcome to Photokina 2018. We're here at the uh, Camera Rescue booth interviewing uh, Jürgen Heyland from Heyland Electronics. So yeah, th hi. thanks for coming over. Um, Jürgen makes uh, all kinds of electronic devices for photography, yeah, that's cool. uh, especially the darkroom side of photography. Mm -hmm. uh, could you tell us more about all the products you make? Yeah. Okay. Um, our goal is to uh, serve for the market of uh, the darkroom products, that's uh, the main area we are, we are working in. And of course, uh, it has nothing to do with the camera itself or with taking the shots, but from the moment on uh, where you have your phone exposed, uh, we are ready to serve products. And uh, the first one is a TAS film processor, which does the classic agitation of films which are located inside the tank um, and it's an automat automatic version to do the agitation. Yeah, it's the one so that it's holds the tank and not only it does inversions but it, it twists yeah. it. Yeah, okay. Both inversions and, and twisting and of course uh, times of pauses in between. Mm -hmm. So it's a classic agitation which everyone uses if he works with a tank and uh, that TAS film processor is available for a lot of different uh, tank systems, uh, Chobo tanks, AP, US, Kaiser, Kindermann, uh, Patterson, and BTZS from USA. No, so I've even seen the adapter for the expert tanks for Jobo because if anyone knows, the expert tanks coming from Jobo are very big, yeah. don't fit in the TAS, or cool. sorry, TAS, uh, I call it TAS. Mm -hmm. So it, instead of clamping into the whole tank, it clamps to the bottom and it has a rolling system, which is very, very ingenious, I have to yeah. say. So it's uh, very similar to the machines uh, offered by, by Chobo. Mm -hmm. And again, our customers have driven that idea to us or bringing that idea to us. And so uh, we realized that what our customers like. And then you do densitometers once you've developed your film you have densitometers for prints and for negatives. Yes, and um, also combined, combined. densimeters. So uh, you can do both measurements uh, alternately. Okay. Um, then you do enlargers, not as enlargers, but enlarger heads. Mm -hmm. So we all know that light bulbs like we have here on the table have becoming a problem in the future. Mm -hmm. So you work the LED panels that uh, you change the whole module and you put the LED from Hayland and the um, split grade and all that. Can you tell us a bit of um, what do you see in the market? Like, are people leaving normal hot lamps and going for LEDs? Mm -hmm. um, so, our first idea uh, about 20 years ago was to equip existing enlargers with a modern system like an, an analyzer combined with a automatic filter change. That was the main idea of the split grade mm -hmm. and of course that has to be a calibrated system. That, that should be the, the unique idea of, of the split grade that you have a completely calibrated system. Um, then we developed and designed a lot of different adapters for, for a lot of enlargers um, but we've seen more and more that the wide range of existing enlargers, it is Im impossible to adapt a mechanic, electromechanic solution for, for any adapter, uh, enlarger. And that was the moment when the idea was born to use LEDs as a light source and not only white LEDs, mm -hmm. but also red, green and blue. So that the multi-grade paper could be exposed directly with blue and green light instead of magenta and yellow light. So the filtering uh, happens thanks to the light source and not filters in the yeah. enlarger, which That's substitutes a problem with filters degrading and filters, finding new sources of filters, which is not happening anymore. Yeah. Okay. And that was one of the main ideas. And in the beginning, when, when that idea was born, uh, there were no LEDs available which are bright enough to uh, expose the photo paper in a, in a reasonable time. Mm -hmm. But then uh, we managed to find LEDs and um, uh, we arranged with the manufacturer that we get very special selections of LEDs. Mm -hmm. And from that moment on, 
uh, we have been able to produce LED pole light sources as a flat area, not a one spot, mm -hmm. but a, a, an area. A, an even area. An even area. Okay. And we created uh, something like panels by our own, uh, including these red, green and blue LEDs. And if you combine these panels, then you can uh, start with 6 by 9 centimeters, so 120 film. Uh, next step is 4 by 5 inch, 5 by 7, 8 by 10. And 20 by 24. And we end up <laughs> at the beast. Yeah. Well, it's not 20 by 24. Is it 24 by 24? Uh, it's not absolutely square. It's something like 22 by 26 inch. Uh -huh. So to have some uh, uh, some borders around, yeah. with, which are also well yeah. eliminated. So you can add a little bit of wiggle room. Just in case for those who don't know, uh, Jürgen has been working at least a few years, because I heard about it two years ago. Um, on a massive horizontal enlarger that can enlarge up to 20 by 24 inch film. That's cool. That it doesn't go on rails because these enlargers traditionally went, go on little train rails. Yeah. Uh, it's self-aligning, which I've heard, which I've seen the demo video. Uh, we'll leave the link on the description about the video uh, showing you guys doing that. And it's LED, which is the first time someone builds something so big. Yes. Uh, can you tell us a bit of how long the project has taken, just to be kind of quick over it, and um, how do you see the benefits of building something so big? Yeah, uh, the project started two years ago, and uh, very interesting. The again, the idea was was born and driven by our customer. Uh, we had a meeting um, because of an exhibition. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, then we met in the afternoon and had a cup of coffee and a piece of cake. And within that talking and discussions, uh, the idea was born to make a brand new enlarger. Uh, and um, now, two years later, we are almost ready to deliver it to mm -hmm. St. Petersburg. Uh -huh. And we are really proud that that system has been uh, become through in, in such a short time. Because if you remember, we are a very small, small team. team, only three, four people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think even in a company with 20, 30 people, it will take more than two years. And now, yeah, we have there an absolutely solid machine made out of solid aluminum, 20 millimeter thick plates, and um, yeah, it doesn't need rails. It is self-aligning to the projection wall. Which is a huge deal because it's the same thing. If people don't know, the bigger the negative enlarge, that you're enlarging, the smaller the depth of field is and more critical. So yeah. you really need to align it properly against the wall, which is it's going to be a horizontal, so they're going to be enlarging against yeah. the wall. So you made it self-aligning with a three-point laser, if I'm not wrong? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a three-point laser, which are uh, uh, arranged in a triangular uh, shape, mm -hmm. and these three lasers measure the distance to the projection wall uh, with a resolution of plus minus one millimeter. And um, then motors are driven individually so that the distance from the three lasers is equal. And in that moment, all motors stop, the enlarger locks in that position, mm -hmm. and then you can do the, the focusing, and of course. If the customer like, he can do manual adjustments if he thinks that he needs, he needs some... To override yeah. it if he needs to. It's okay. Uh, well, and all of that is done with a small remote control which you hold in your hand. Well, that's an amazing idea. I would talk for hours about that and I hope to see uh, Anton in St. Petersburg and record the machine working. That machine should be uh, shall be available in the, in the future. Uh, also for other negative sizes. So if someone is interested in an 8 by 10 inch enlarger, the same system will be available for any negative size that they Okay, uh, that's great to know. Um, the 8 by 10, will it be 8 by 10 or 10 by 10, like the classic 10 ones? by 10. 10 I by think. 10, so you can, uh, mostly because if you want to enlarge vertical or horizontal, yeah. you can change uh, the, the negative inside yeah. the enlarger, which is great. Okay, that's good to know that it'll be available to everyone else too. Yeah, of course. Okay, so you brought here some something new. So yeah. tell me, uh, Jürgen, what do we have here? Okay, um, I think everyone knows who uh, that bulbs, tungsten bulbs, 
uh, in that case a 12 volt 100 watt bulb and our new project is to make uh, a replacement which is the same shape mm -hmm. as the bulb but it uses an LED inside. Which is inside there, I had to ask yeah. just in case. Yeah. And uh, that LED will make an intensity of light which is approximately the same like the 100 watt bulb. Mm -hmm. And the second news about that project is that it could be operated by a remote control, okay. which is delivered as an app for, uh, on your for a smartphone. Which you already have an app for your smartphone yeah. or your other and larger and LEDs. That's, that's so this is going to happen just with a light bulb. Yeah. So simply connect the 12 volt mm -hmm. to that bulb, and then the final operation is done by that app. What um, what kind of source? It's going to be only 12 volt. Or is it going to be higher than that, um, or not yet? I think 24 volt is absolutely in the range, mm -hmm. but the brightness of the lamp is not uh, like 250 watt. Mm -hmm. But let's see LED technique goes on and uh, I think we will As it improve we, yeah, we we'll will get have better some versions. improvements yeah when will this be available Jürgen at the end of that year absolutely uh, so if if someone is interested he can already contact us okay. um, and I think at the end of the year we will have the first lens okay okay well thank you so much for joining us Jürgen um, just one last question um, to finish it up from last year, I mean, two years ago, for mm -hmm. Okina, 2016, we met, we talked, and you said there was an increase in in demand of darkroom supplies. And have you seen a steady increase, or have things gone higher, or things have stopped a little bit? What's yeah. your idea of what you've seen in your business? I think the um, the regular products of which we have in in our range, um, it's a small increase compared to two years ago. Mm -hmm. Not so big, but in the past two years, we, we worked very hard on that enlarger, and that might be also a reason why the, that I did not find new distributors and so on. Mm -hmm. um, but everything is stable and fine. We are really lucky in that niche market, actually. Yeah. So that's good to know. I'm sure that that enlarger took a lot of time and energy from, from yeah. the small team. <laughs> So yeah, thank you for joining us, Jürgen, here. Have a great Farokina. Today's the first day, so yeah. we're still fresh uh, out of the fair. And um, yeah, anyone wants any information, there'll be links below to Jürgen's website and uh, any information we've talked on the video. So thank you. Thank you also for the conversation. Yeah, thank you very much, Jürgen.